What's up, Seguin High? This is Maddie Coleman. And Chloe Polanco. Today we'll feature a story on the seniors big move to the Gold Center. We'll also introduce you to this year's trainers and we have a brand new MC Sports. This, this is MattCast. This is Michael Grandis with your bi-weekly news update. Many things are happening around school and the world. Here's what's going on around school. The Matador football team is looking to prove their record of 1-2 and two tonight in a home game against Lockhart at 7.30. The volleyball team is also playing today at 6.30 against Lockhart. Be sure to show your pride by wearing Hawaiian themed clothes. In other school news, Avid Club is starting up on Wednesday. It'll be from 4 o'clock to 4.45. Make sure you show up. The TSI tests are this Saturday. Be sure to sign up and make an appointment in the office. Recently, a report came out about Chicago. 500 murders have happened in the last nine months. That is already higher than the average of 2015 in all the years past, and there are still three months remaining. Things are looking grim for Chicago, and hopefully things can change. Now, as some of you may know, the seniors have moved back to the Freshman Center. Or is it the Gold Center? We talked to a few of them to see what they thought of the big move. With campus construction well underway and the new high school set to open next year, SHS students face changes every day. For seniors, moving to what is now known as the Gold Campus is one of the most significant challenges they will face this year. Um, when I found out that we were going to be back here in the Freshman Center, I felt um, kind of excited because I enjoyed like you know the small space and not having to travel further distances. But then the beginning of the year came around and I realized like there's students that come from Goldie and even like myself comes from far distances in the mornings. And um, it's hard during a five minute passing period to get from place to place. The passing period being reduced to five minutes is not good at all because I have um, some classes that are in the 500 wing or on the varsity campus and I have to walk upstairs or downstairs here and it's really far and I really don't make it to my classes on time. It's pretty hard to come from Goldie or the locker room because you have to rush over here and it's not that it's not that sure of a way to go. So mostly every morning I'm kind of like late to my second period class since I have to come from all the way over there. Being a senior back here in the Gold Center, um, it's kind of a disappointment because I don't see all my classmates and I feel like this is our last year and we all need to be together. And um, it's just not fair that we don't get to see everyone all the time. I'll never get used to calling this the Gold Center because from, I mean, four years ago it was called the Freshman Center and to me it's still going to be the Freshman Center. That's where I started my high school career and I was going to end it here. And I was like, I was kind of weirded out by it because at first they said it was going to be the Senior Center and I was like, the sound makes us sound old, but it was pretty weird. It's not that bad. Though calling it the Gold Center may seem strange, it is only a small piece of a much bigger change coming to campus next year as the new SHS opens its doors. While the seniors have been moving, football and volleyball have also had big changes too. It's time to get our game day gear on and send it to Isaiah with MC Sports. The beginning of the school year is the beginning of a new season for two very important programs, volleyball and football. Due to seniors graduating, Volleyball has started their season with an almost completely new team and has gone 2-0 in district so far with their most recent win Tuesday against Alamo Heights. They look to have another playoff season and hope to advance further than they did this past year. We hope the Lady Matadors have an outstanding season. Friday Night Lights are back and couldn't be any better. Under the supervision of new coach Travis Bush and a new coaching staff, the Matadors have gone 1-2 to start their season. They've been able to improve on their offensive game while keeping their defensive game just as strong. Mark Garcia has thrown for seven touchdowns so far this season, and the running back duo of Brandon Palomares and Clarence Tibbs have rushed for over 300 yards and seven touchdowns. The Matadors will look to be more consistent and improve on their game, and with the support of the students and school, they will continue to fight in such a tough district. An often overlooked part of the athletic department are the trainers. 
Diego and I got the inside story on what it takes to be one of them. Every Friday night, when the football team plays, there's a dedicated crew of matadors who often go overlooked, trainers. This group helps keep the team hydrated and helps handle injuries when they occur. We spoke to a few of the ladies on the staff to find out why they became a trainer and what goes into their job. Training has impacted my life in a very great way because it has made me, helped me experience more things like how to wrap an ankle, how to wrap a wrist, how to be more helpful towards the boys um, or anybody really. It has helped me have more people skills than I already had and it's really helped me um, just get a better bond with more people. I get the chance to help others and I get an opportunity to get more hands-on experience on things that I actually want to do in my future. As in being an athletic trainer, that's really what I'm going for. I was interested in being a physical therapist when I was like kind of thinking about what I wanted to do with my future. So I wanted to be an athletic trainer. I got in the class and I learned how to tape things like ankles and wrists and knees and then I know how to stim, um, pick up, like hook up boys to stim and so just kind of learning on the way. My favorite part of being an athletic trainer is getting to help people when they're injured and also being able to learn all of those things so I can not only practice them on players and I can also practice them on like my family members or like I know what to do in certain situations when other people get hurt. And Friday night lights are so amazing as it's like from the stands I just wanted to be down with all of them and learn how to take care of people. I think I've never really considered doing anything in the medical field because it kind of like drew me away. But the more I'm exposed to it, the more I do learn about it. And really, I've met so many people and I can never put a price on all of the relationships I've made in athletic training. And that's it for today's news. This has been Maddie Coleman. And Chloe Polanka. Have, Have a great, great Friday. Friday. I got this feeling inside my bones. It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on. All from my city, all from my home. We're flying up, no ceiling when we in our zone. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Got that good soul in my feet. I feel that hot blood in my body when it drops. Ooh, I can't take my eyes.